Hello and welcome to this tutorial on conference posters, the ins and outs of creating and presenting your poster. So the very first thing we're going to talk about is software. There is no one software that you have to use. So I have four different options up here and depending on how you're creating your poster or creating your presentation for this particular virtual environment, may depend on which programs you need. So a lot of people will try to do it in either PowerPoint or InDesign. I personally used Photoshop before for poster creation. Word can be beneficial. Excel is really important to me, or at least it has been in the past, for making graphs and those sorts of things. But there may be other things that you use for creating infographics or different pieces that are going to go in your poster or go into your virtual presentation. So keep that in mind as you develop is that you might not be using just one program and that these are just some examples that might be beneficial to you as you work through this process. If you need any assistance though, you can always try using LinkedIn Learning, which is found on the library's website under the database page. So you can find help on any of these different programs if you're thinking, I don't know how to use Excel to make awesome graphs. There is a LinkedIn Learning for that. So definitely use all the resources that are available, but if you have extra questions, you can always reach out to the library or anyone in the SRC. So the next piece that you're going to be thinking about is your content. So how are you going to put all of this content together? So the first thing you want to think about when creating your poster, your presentation for this virtual environment is what is the purpose? Why are you doing this? So you want to highlight the main points. Don't get too far off into the weeds. You want to highlight the main points of your research and you need to make it visually appealing. So no presentation should be boring, but posters more than anything else need to be visually appealing. And so you want your presentation to stand out and really grab people's attention. Think about your audience. So define the key terms, rephrase sentences. Are there any terms that you're going to have to explain because they're really technical terms for your field and someone in another field might understand them. Keep in mind the design requirements. You want to check with the conference to see what the requirements are. So for the student research conference, some of the things that they look at in particular are the structure and organization, the concepts, the connections. So learning outcomes and progressions. How did everything all fit together? Was there a smooth process of research? Do you explain it? What was your process and methods? Did you fully explain your research process? Did it go through all of the different areas of research that you went into? Or did you just start at stage one and you got to stage four and no one knows what you did in between? So make sure all of this is explained or, or at least has highlights of what you did in each piece and that anyone, whether they are in your field or outside your field, will be able to understand the content. And the mechanics. So I will hit on this throughout this entire presentation, but grammar, spelling, your language, all of these are going to be really critical. So keep that in mind as you're making this poster or your presentation for virtual that these sorts of things are really important. Originality, how unique was your research question? Is it something that's really commonplace? Most of the time you're going to be presenting something that is more unique. You came up with this idea and then talking about how did your idea fit into the larger context of your field. So you have this idea and then now you're going to be developing it and showing how it fits into the bigger piece of the field. And then looking at the work itself, what did you learn from it? Those sorts of pieces. You also, when you're thinking about your design, is the colors, the fonts, and the spacing. And we're going to talk more about that in a little bit. So what all goes on the poster? The presentation itself or the poster, it's going to have a name and a title. Uh, who was part of this and what was the title of the research? Like, What exactly did you do your research on? It's going to have an introduction. So it's going to give some background on, on what the poster is about. It's going to have a methods and materials section. So what did you do and what materials did you use? Your results. So you went through all these methods. Now what? So what were the actual results that came out of the methods that you used? Conclusions. 
from doing all of this research, what were you able to conclude? Did you have any acknowledgments or sponsors? Is there anyone that should get highlighted? And then it, it can include references and often does and should include references and further information. If someone wants to know more about your research topic, where could they go to find more information on it? So a review, you want to review before you print or before you present is a grammar check. You can use all of these different resources. You can do all of them, one of them. I would recommend at least one. Uh, so go to the Writing Center, ask them, you know, could you look over this presentation, this poster, your professor, friends and family, have them look it over. The more eyes on this, the less likely there are going to be those simple mistakes. And then positioning of sections, you want to have that equal alignment for a traditional poster. So if you're doing a more standard presentation because of the virtual environment, then this won't apply. But alignment is important if you're doing that full poster format. Now we're going to get into the design of a traditional poster. So if you're doing more of a presentation this year, that's completely understandable. But if you do want to know more about the actual design of a poster, this is going to be an important section for you. So posters, they read from top to bottom, left to right. It's really important for you to think about that when you're designing your poster. You don't want your introduction to be on the bottom left. That's not how anyone's going to read it. So think about how to structure your poster so that it makes the most sense. Don't put your whole paper on your poster and think it's done. No one wants to read your whole paper. What they want to read are the highlights, the key points. How can you summarize? How can you put this in a way that makes it very visually appealing? Alignment. Alignment matters. Having just randomly spaced boxes, no, no true alignment, makes it distracting to read. Fonts. Don't use more than two. So maybe you want your headings in one and you want the rest of it in a different font, that's perfectly fine, but don't go more than two fonts. Don't get excited and think, oh, if I add more fonts, it will make it more appealing. Often it just becomes more distracting. Colors, you can have complementary colors. Try to avoid things that are too bright. Bright, yes, does grab the attention, but it can also distract from the purpose. So keep those things in mind. And them appropriate fonts, Arial, Times New Roman, they're pretty simple. And then you have examples of inappropriate fonts, your comic sans, your scripts, anything that may grab attention, but it's not the kind of attention that you're really working for. Here are some sample templates of your traditional poster. You have your title, it's going to take up that whole space at the top, the author section, you have introduction. As you can see here, all of this, it's all nicely aligned. So the bottom is all aligned, your sides are aligned. None of this is jagged. But you want to keep that. Like these all boxes don't have to look the exact same size, but they do have to be well aligned. So bottom alignment, side alignment, you can look for free examples. There's tons of them out there. See how other researchers did them and use boxes to clearly define your sections. So a box per idea. So introduction, methods, and materials, results, conclusions, all of these things are going to help bring focus to those different areas. So if I'm only interested in results, I can quickly go to the results section. It's really important to have each box be its own thing. Now, here are some examples of what this looks like when you actually see a poster. We have some kind of acknowledgments here. So LU, this person did background, gender and methods. All of this is going to be aligned. You see the acknowledgments, the general discussion points. So these are all different ways you can structure it. So it doesn't have to be exactly the same. You can have different headings, but these are some ways to think about it. Another example, it has, again, the graphs, uh, the results, all these different things, conclusions. This one has acknowledgments being more symbol. So all of that is fine. It's helping bring that visual appeal. And then there's a new kind of standard that students and researchers are using, which was proposed by a PhD student that looks less cluttered and they're thinking a more friendly and it gets at three of the major conference needs, so it maximizes the insight. So this piece right here is really maximizing. This is what you're supposed to learn from my, my poster presentation. It makes it easier to make. You're just going to have 
the main point right there in the middle, and it includes what you want people to know. And this is an example of this. So here's their title, describes what it is, all of these different pieces, and this is what I want you to know. This was the most important part. Still have people that are associated with down here, some pictures. So all of this is pretty simple. This is what we did. This is how it worked. You know, all of these pieces. Content resources. So content resources are going to be the extras. So your pictures. If maybe you don't need any pictures, but if you are going to use pictures on your poster presentation, if you took pictures, excellent. If not, you want to make sure you're using things that are copyright compliant. Don't go and steal copyrighted materials. Look, you know, the Noun Project has some. Um, Google, you have to be careful with this. Some of them are, are definitely copyrighted images. So look for the copyright free ones. Wikimedia, you have Pixabay. On our Lindenwood LibGuide, which is our OER one specifically, which is Open Educational Resources, this guide has all kinds specifically on images. If you're doing a traditional poster, you're going to want to make sure it's a high resolution image. If you're not doing a traditional poster, but instead are doing more of a presentation, the high resolution isn't going to matter quite as much because you'll be doing it on the screen. But looking at resolution is going to matter. You want to test it before you actually go out and show everyone. Is the resolution good? Is the resolution not? All the presentations that we saw, all of these had the logo of either their school or something else. So think about what logos do you want to include? in your presentation or poster. And then the actual presenting part. This piece is going to be important because your presentation or poster is not supposed to last the same length as a traditional presentation. The concurrent sessions are usually 20 minutes in length. This is going to be shorter. You really have to highlight what information is available on your research and, and go through that. So do you have a two minute spiel? Do you have a five minute spiel? Do you have a 10 minute spiel? So as people are coming to you and asking you questions, you know, you'll figure out do, uh, do they want the five minute, the two minute, the 10 minute, what level of your presentation should you have available? And you can also see how interested people are. Maybe the a two minute spiel is the right for one group, the 10 minute for a different group. So think about what are the ways you can highlight this? The summary points, what can you summarize? How can you break it down in its most simple form, but still get the, the point across? What parts do you think are going to be the most challenging? Are you going to have to explain those graphs more? So think about what are the areas you're going to need to focus the most on and what sections don't need as much time. Think about questions. What questions might people have? How can you explain them as you're going? Look at your grammar. Never hurts to review it. It's just important. Are there any handouts that you should have to really highlight your research? You know, maybe further research should be its own handout. So keep those things in mind as you prepare. And then presenting. A lot of this is going to be for the more traditional poster, but some of these are critical pieces no matter if you're doing it virtually or if you're doing it in person. So greet. You want to greet the people that come up to you and want to learn about your poster. You want to interact with them a little bit before you actually start giving your poster presentation. Then once you start to give your presentation, you want to stand to the side of your poster and you want to maintain eye contact. So let everyone be able to see your poster. Use hand gestures. So don't be stiff as a board. Relax. Point at different pieces on your poster to kind of highlight what you're talking about. Spend time on your tables and graphs. Don't assume that everyone understands what they mean. You know, summarize different pieces of the poster. If anyone comes late to the session or to your talk, um, welcome them. Hello, we're in the blank section. We're going to talk about my methods now. Or this graph highlights this. So talk about those different things. Check for understanding. Make sure that everyone is understanding as you're going. Does that make sense? Do you have any questions? And maintain professionalism. Conferences are meant to help you see how research fits into the larger scholarly communications piece. So how, how do you as a scholar fit into the larger world? And so you want to maintain that professionalism. This isn't you presenting to 
uh, your cat, this is you presenting to other scholars. So it's important to maintain that professionalism piece. And if you do have any questions, you can of course contact anyone in the library or you can contact members of the SRC committee. So you can talk to your professors. All of these people are excellent resources for you to help you make sure you have the conference poster or presentation that you want and that you get the most out of this experience.